Hey, it's Norm from Tesla.com. I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia, right outside Atlanta for Dragon Con, but we're also here with Harrison Crick's Vulpin Props, the culmination of a nine month journey. We've been following along on Tested. We commissioned you to build us a prop uh, almost a year ago now, and we're finally yep. here to see in person. It is, if you play video games, the Needler from Halo, Halo Reach, right? Yeah, well, I, I don't want to be, you know, I, I, do, I wish I had the glasses to kind of push up and do the nerd moment. It, it's, not exactly, it's not the one from Reach, and it's not the one from Halo 4 either. It's got a Halo 4 paint job, oh. but it's actually the Reach model, and there's very subtle clues to people who are super Halo fans as to how they would recognize the difference between the two. So yeah, we'll I'll get into the details. Open. Absolutely, we're gonna go inspect this in excruciating detail in just a second. But I want to talk about the whole history, of the whole build process for this, because um, it was fascinating. You can read all about that. Harrison did these wonderful build logs on Tested, but we're gonna go over them uh, right now. So first, design. When you want to build something from scratch, because these are all built from scratch. Yep. In this workshop right here. Mm -hmm. This is not a real object in the real world. It's a virtual object. It is now. Object. Well, now it is. Yes. yes. So how did you start going about the design for this? Okay, uh, well, whenever I build anything, any prop, any replica, I gather a whole bunch of reference images. So for this, uh, I started off with just grabbing screenshots uh, that people have when they're playing Halo. And the unfortunate part of Halo is it's on an Xbox, right? And that's exclusive, not on PC. It's so very you, unfortunate. Yeah, it's really hard to rip the models. So normally when you, when you build something from a video game, you can open it up and you know, in, there's all kinds of model viewers out there and you know, play with the model and look at it different angles, that sort of stuff. So I started with screenshots and I'm, I'm a little lucky in the sense that I've got a, a really good following on Facebook. A lot of other builders, a lot of really good technically minded people, a lot of big fans of these franchises and series. And so I put this out there and I said, hey, anybody out there in the internet world, if you have any references of the Needler from Halo, I'd love to have them. Um, and this guy got in touch with me, he runs a, a Halo uh, site on Facebook, I think it's called The History of Halo. And uh, he sent me all of the 3D files for this. And not only that, he sent me those in OBJ format, which you can open in Photoshop, because mm -hmm. I'm not really 3D program savvy. So he sent me all that and I was able to rotate this thing and, and do cutaways and skeleton views and get some really fantastic references. And then you decide on the scale of this. Because yes. Master Chief's a big guy. Yeah, he's like seven foot four, you know, he's astronomically tall. Yeah. And for, that, for him, this is a sidearm. You know, this is a pistol. It's a one-handed, you know, it's a one-handed thing. Uh, so I went on the Halo Wikipedia and it said that this was 29 and a half inches long. I also pulled up some images of Master Chief holding it, scaled him up, and found out that the model in his hands, if you scale him to seven foot four, is actually about 32 inches long. Oh. So it's a little bit of variance. I ended up making this right at 29. Um, when all was said and done, if you include the last little bit of fin there, I guess it would be 29 and a half. Not the full 32 because I felt like any bigger and this thing's just yeah. gonna get way out of control for anybody to walk around and hold. So it's, it's a good scale for someone, for a regular person. Yeah, it's hold. still, you know, for, for you and me and anybody else who's not seven foot tall, you hold it and it's still a big weapon. Yeah. You know, if, if somebody who's seven foot tall um, holds it, it's gonna look more like a sidearm. Side note, I actually have a friend of mine who's coming to Dragon Con who is seven feet tall. So I'm really looking forward to seeing if he can hold this and get some scale reference. So you design schematics, you yes. do blueprints mm -hmm. from all angles, and then you get to work building it. Before the casting, you have to build like a prototype. Right. Right. So how do, how do you go about that and what materials do you use? So this is, this is a finished prototype, and this is the upper casing of it. And uh, this is all in primer. Um, this right here is a, a little pore spot I made for the mold. But uh, this is a whole bunch of different parts sort of uh, amalgamated together. If you were to, to take a saw and just cut this down the middle, you'd find that the inside of this kind of looks like the hull of an old ship, right? An old wooden boat. Layers so it's got, and... Yeah, yeah. It's cage. got all these sorts of spines that go this way, right? And from those, I'm, I blend the shape out around it and then gradually kind of add in detail. So I get the basic shape done, then I start carving in these lines and adding in these indents and adding in this indent. So it's, it's kind of, uh, you know, get the general thing down and then gradually work smaller and smaller. And you build like a skeleton, like an MDF skeleton yep. on the inside and then you use foam yep. to kind of shave off and Foam, details. lots of Bondo, yeah. uh, lots of sanding to get it all nice and smooth. That's basically how most of these parts were assembled. It's a, it's a sort of additive layer process if you've ever you know, seen uh, 3D printers, mm -hmm. um, you know, like a MakerBot or something, it prints in layers. I'm kind of doing the same thing. Kind of inside out. Right, you know, lower fidelity, obviously, and I can't, I, I'm not doing all these little cuts in. So I do a, a rough 3D print, I suppose, of the part, and then add in the rest of the deal sculpturally later. And then after you've sculpted and finished the prototype, mm -hmm. you cast it. Right. right, so this piece right now 
is, you know, it looks obviously like that. And if I painted the two of them, it would show up and they'd, they'd be, you know, virtually identical. Problem is, the inside of this is this spider web of foam and MDF. So it's heavy, it's fragile, and it's very difficult to get electronics through, right? So the end goal, you want something that's lightweight, durable, and that's what all this is. This is urethane resin. Mm -hmm. um, so you take this part, or, you know, parts like it, and you make molds. So this is, uh, for example, a simple mold of the back part. So you can see it's it's sort of an inverted copy, and I um, you know I made a, I made this master made this mold out of silicon. You pour a two part resin in here, so it's just two different colors plastic. Dump it in after a little while it sets. You pull it out, and you end up with a finished plastic piece. Um, that's the long and short of it for all of them. Um, you just repeat that for all these parts. And so for the bigger guy, this is what the mold looks like. This is uh, silicon rubber on the inside. Uh, this outer part is called a mold jacket, keeps the silicon in shape. You dump the two-part resin in here, you slush it around. As it cures, it sort of sticks to the sides and you end up with a hollow part that's lightweight, like this guy. So this was my first pull from the molds. Very solid. It's and very solid and it's probably about half the weight of yeah. that, maybe oh, yeah. a little less. And so this piece has a bunch of numbers on it because I was using it as a test piece when I was placing all the needles. But since this is all one material, it's not affected by heat, moisture, um, it's, uh, it's a lot more durable. You can, you know, this, since this is Bondo, you press your fingernail into it, it'll mm -hmm. scuff and scrape. This is very rigid. This urethane resin won't be going anywhere for a while. And the detail of the mold, it, it pulls a lot of detail. Like yeah, here, it'll the, pull, yeah. The relief those, here is very small. Yep, those little guys right there, those are just vinyl, and so they're less than maybe 0.02 of an inch thick. Right. And it, it pulls in all those details. So mostly uh, urethane resin? Yeah, it's actually all urethane resin. Uh, there are several different kinds of urethane mm -hmm. in here. So this stuff, the stuff that you do all of these parts with can be opaque. So uh, yes. that dries um, as, a, as an opaque resin. Obviously all these guys need to be clear because there's a bunch of light going through them. So this is a very different type of resin. Uh, this stuff, the stuff that all these parts are made with, sets in about 10, 20 minutes, so you can pull it out of the mold in about an hour. These guys have to sit up for about 90 minutes and then they're not fully cured for seven days. Uh, so it's just different properties of the resin you kind of have to get used to. All right, so once you've kind of assembled the, the resin pieces, this also, it lights up as you can see. Yes, it so does. there are some electronics in here. There are. Uh, would, you like to, would you like to pull the trigger? Yeah. It is fun. Let's well, more than one sound effect because there's another switch on the opposite side of the power. And so if you want full auto fire, you just hold that down now. That is amazing. It's That's fun. Awesome. Yeah. So tell us about the electronics that are in, in this uh, needler part. Okay, there's 54 LEDs in it. Pink ones, obviously here, blue ones here, uh, three mil and five mil. There are about a million wires, because uh, each LED has its own you know, cables and series and all that sort of stuff. There is a power cord right here, right, that leads up through the bottom of the stand into the base and powers all the LEDs and the audio uh, while it's plugged into a wall, which means you can leave this thing turned on long as you want. It has an audio chip in it from a website called replicaprops.com and uh, the guy who, who runs that is really cool. You send him a file or a series of files and you say, I want these sound effects to be triggered by a button push or a trigger or you know, hold it down or just one press and he'll program it for you and you get a little chip in the mail. It's all set up as you know, 1.0 header and you can drop it into breadboards and stuff so it's, it's really easy to work with. So that's the audio. Um, I got the audio files themselves from the guys, again, with that Facebook page. And then there's an amp in there from SparkFun, so it's nice and loud and robust. A little one inch speaker back here that's hidden under this accessory, so you don't really see it. Little push button trigger right there to uh, turn the audio on and off. Um, so when it's plugged into uh, the wall, this power runs up through the back. You can pop these guys off. So these are little detail pieces. They're held on with magnets, which is a, a new thing for you. Oh my gosh, it makes, so great. makes life so much easier. So these are my battery covers. If you want to carry it around, there's a little switch back here that says AC-DC. Switch it over to there, right? Now you're in DC, now you're on now the you're battery on power. power. And you can lift it off, carry it around, have a good time. Perfect for Dragon Con. Oh yeah, totally. And then finally, there's the paint shop, and you do such incredible work. Can you talk a little about this, the paint shop? I this? can. Normally, as you can see with my giant wall back here, rattle cans, I, I tend to go with pre-mixed paint. Um, for a lot of stuff, that's okay. And a lot of video games have sort of flat paint schemes. Guns are silver mm -hmm. and black. Most things don't require this sort of level of layering to it. The needler, though, is supposed, at least in Halo 4, is supposed to have this almost iridescent quality to it, like yeah. blue fade to purple, that kind of look. For that, I did a lot of airbrush work. So all of these guys here, 
I started off by painting them silver, like these parts were, and then I laid down a mask, right? So uh, all these little hex patterns were cut out of vinyl, um, laid down, I sprayed purple and blue in combination to give these a darker look. I peeled up that mask, then did the rest of the paint job in the purple, so that gives me this sort of ghosted hex pattern across the whole surface. So I got to know my airbrush really well during the course of this project. I think it turned out pretty good. Um, and then some additional weathering on the edges. Yeah, yeah. You know, the rest of the weathering, um, all of the darker areas, just acrylic paint, lots of washes. Mm -hmm. So I'd go over with, uh, you know, medium brown, darker brown, black, you know, just to add up and give it more grime. Um, personally, I, I think that adding weathering in layers, uh, you know, adding thin wash, thin wash, thin wash gives you a more realistic look than if you try to just try to slop it all on at once because you know, that's how things get dirty over time. And then all the dry brush stuff is uh, you know, enamel paint just on the accent edges to call that out. A um, few pieces like these guys back here uh, were painted silver originally and then I did sort of a dust coat with blue to give them a little bit, you know, like a different metal texture almost. You know, it's an alien weapon. Who knows what this is made out of? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, the whole thing looks fantastic. Thank you. Uh, it's going to be really hard to give this to you. I mean, I know you paid for it and you've been waiting nine months for the thing, but I, I kind of want to give it to you. Uh, right well, now. the great thing is you have the mold. Yes, I have the mold. So I can make so another you can one. can make another one. And for people out there, you're actually selling kits I am. for the needler now. Yes. And people can go on your website, yep. Volpin Props. Volpinprops.com. V O L P I N. Yep. And they can get castings yep. just of the, the basic shape of this. Yep. It's a, it's a 24 piece kit. Uh, it's, you know, it's all these needles, it's all these different parts and they all come straight out of the mold so I've taken a lot of the work out of it for you but there's still a lot of work to be done left. And for people who just want to see pictures or read about how Harrison built this over the course of this past year, <laughs> uh, you go to Tested.com. We have a big feature on uh, the Neo prop from Harrison. Harrison, thank you for inviting us to your home, to your thank workshop. You well, thank you for hiring me to make this really awesome thing. I've always wanted to make one and this is a treat to be able to actually bring it into the world. Thank you so much. And for more stuff, again, go to test.com. I'm Norm from Tested. We'll have more from DragonCon, more from Harrison's shop on Tested. We'll see you next time. Bye. How do you make it like shoot a whole bunch? Okay, there's a trigger over here, right? And it's the auto and semi. Now hold the button down.